With the eyeballs in place, we can look to some of the bony structures that can give us an idea of the placement of the eyelids. Um, now, there are two important features here, and three maybe, if one of them doesn't work out. So we've got the anterior lacrimal crest here. So if we kind of zoom in here, you'll see this shallow recessed area. That's where the lacrimal gland sin sits, and the uh, the medial palpebral ligament uh, inserts here onto the bone, sort of in the middle part. So we can mark that here, and we can... Uh, it's kind of filled in on this side, but we can kind of guess that it's going to be somewhere around here. We can maybe use the uh, marker we get on this side to indicate where it is on this side. Of course, it wouldn't be perfectly symmetrical. The other thing to look for for the lateral pal palpebral ligaments would be the malar tubercle, or also called Whitnell's tubercle. Um, and again, it might not be something we can easily uh, find on this model since it's kind of the resolution is, is poor. Yours may be different. Uh, it looks like it could be something like here, but it's usually set back from the orbital margin here. The other way to look for it is to measure down, well there are two different measurements that have been published um, and in the recent paper by Hayes about their reconstruction she mentions uh, going down 7.5 millimeters from here whereas the old measurement was 9.5 uh, but the newer findings seem to indicate 7.5. It looks like the tubercle is going to be somewhere around here so let's just try to measure this and see so probably easiest to do in the frontal view so we're looking at the zygomatico frontal suture here so here's the zygomatic bone here's the frontal bone and the suture here so we want to measure about seven millimeters seven and a half between seven and a half and nine and a half millimeters down not a huge variation but it would change uh, the orientation of the eyes uh, uh, significantly, I would imagine. Now, it looks like the tubercle could be right here, so let's just try a measure. So again, we're going to select the skull, make it live, uh, go to Create, Measure Tools, Distance Tool, and the suture is about here. And then I'm just going to click here, and that gives us one point, so that's um, just over one centimeter. So I can just select this locator, hit W, and just move this up until... So that would be 9.5 around there. Uh, the measurement that they mentioned is around 7.5, and that looks more like where I'm sort of expecting to find the Whitnell's tubercle based on what we're seeing in here. So we'll use that as our guideline here. It's not perfect. If we had the real skull, we might be able to tell. Um, so to mark this, I'm just actually going to take this little nose sphere that I made earlier, and I'll duplicate it, so Control d and I'll just move this over here. Oh, I want to make the skull. Uh, well, no, I'll, I'll keep it live for now. So now that the skull is live, I can just drag this along the surface to around where it's indicating where the malar tubercle should be. We can do the same thing on this side. Again, uh, it's a little harder to see the suture over here, but it looks like it's around here. So we'll use the distance measure tool. Click, and again, I'll just select the bottom one. Hit W. So we get to about 0.75 or so. And again, duplicate this, so shift D, so that's the little sphere. I'll just drag it over here now. It should stick to the surface, and I can kind of put it in place there. And in the perspective view, just slide it along. See, it looks to me like the tubercle is right around here. There's some indication as I move around the change in shape. So I'm going to actually put it here because it looks that looks like it to me. 
over here. So it's gonna be about that. So now we can just mark the uh, anterior lacrimal crest in the same way. Um, I'm going to duplicate this sphere and just drag it over. And I might make it a little bit bigger just to scale it up to indicate just around where the the middle part of the anterior lacrimal crest is. So something like that. So this makes sense that the medial canthus, because this indicates where the medial canthus will be, it's going to be lower than the lateral canthus here. I can duplicate this again. Oops, I moved that too far over. Should be on the anterior lacrimal crest, not set behind. I'm just going to duplicate this, pull it along the nose, and again, this one it looks like it's going to be around here. In my model, it's kind of filled in, so it's hard to tell. And so that gives us some idea of where to place the palpebral ligaments, which in turn indicates the shape of the eyes. Okay. I'm actually, just to make it a little clearer, I'm going to make these just a little bit bigger. So I'm just selecting these spheres and scaling them up. And again, I am going to select these measure tools that I use, so the last distance and the two locators. I'm going to create a new layer and I'll call these um, eye measurements. And I'd like you to do the same, just save all of these things so I can take a look at them. And then these spheres I'm going to save on a layer and I'll call this eye guidelines. Okay, so that's good. Oh, actually, now looking at this, it looks like I moved that back too far. Should be out here a little further. You have to consist constantly move around to make sure things don't get pushed out of whack. So things are coming along. Oh. It looks like those measure tools didn't get added when I created the eye measurements layer. So just select them again, holding down shift to select them all and go to eye measurements, right click on that, add selected objects. Ah, uh, sorry, it is adding those ones. Oh, there are two more here. Do that again, add selected objects, and now they're all added. Okay. There we go. Thanks.